Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're gonna to be talking about the technology roadmap. This is a roadmap that you may want to uh, prepare if you are in the IT field. It's a great roadmap that really gives you an overview of a trajectory of where you wanna take IT or certain IT systems over the next one, two, three, even five years. So it really gives you a nice guideline on a number of items that you can cover and you can present to senior management or those in senior IT positions that essentially sign the check and approve these decisions and approve these um, products that you want to deploy. So the technology roadmap really is going to encompass a number of different items that you want to achieve in the realm of technology over a certain space of time. They can be broken up into several different categories. So if you may have different departments that you are involved with, say for example, service desk, infrastructure, development, etc., and there may be different goals that you wanna to set to each of those. For example, from an infrastructure perspective, you may want to you know, look at improving the security or upgrading all of your servers, installing some new storage devices, those sort of things, and that would be outlined in your roadmap. So generally, I will do my roadmaps over a 12 to 24 month um, technology period, right? So this is the period that I want to roll out certain technologies or make certain improvements in process and change. Uh, I think generally, if you go further than 24 months, it can get lost. So really, I would recommend 12 months would be a good guideline where you can achieve a number of things over a 12 month period and then you review that and then you present the next 12 months going on from your next roadmap uh, the following year. So depending if you wanna go for a 12 month or 24 month, let's start with 12. I break down my roadmap into quarters. So quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four to break up that year and in each quarter, the number of things that I want to achieve. So this could be a range of different things. So the structure of your overall roadmap really is going to change depending on the scenario. So you may just wanna have a simple document that you create, a Word document, a PDF document that really shows every single one of the items that you want to achieve uh, and the timeline on how long that's gonna to take uh, to achieve. Uh, the start, the end date, estimates, um, you could have something like a Gantt chart that shows you a full overview of every single item and the time start and end estimating and then showing you where they sort of are structured in terms of your 12 month or 24 month uh, roadmap period, showing you which items overlap. So I'll break down my actual individual items. Let's say for example, it's a SAN upgrade. I wanna implement a brand new SAN. Uh, I'm gonna have the title of it, gonna say it's, it's a SAN upgrade, a description of what it is, and my estimated start date. So when do I anticipate starting this? Roughly how long it's going to take, what my resources are, resource requirements are. Can I use my internal resources? Can I use the staff that I already have in-house, my network, my storage guys, my desktop guys, my developers, or do I need to go out and get third parties? Do I need external resources, external consultants to come in? My rationale, why do I need to do it? Uh, very, very important. A lot of people will go, yeah, that's nice, but why do I need to do it? What is the benefit to my business? What is the risk to my business if I don't do it? So really demonstrating why you need to do this. And if you can, an estimated cost. How much is it gonna cost you? Uh, from a um, you know from a hardware perspective, from a software perspective, and you could even break it down there from a time perspective and a resource perspective, based on you know if it's going to take me three months to deploy this, how much time is that going to require in full time? How much estimated cost is that going to require in terms of the amount of resources required? If I need to get external consultants in, what their daily rate is going to be, and I'll also have then a risk rating. So what is the level of risk? if I don't do this, right? So it's gonna be a high, medium, or low. Uh, very low could be, look, I just wanna um, install the latest version of Windows on, on all my computers, but the current version that's running is okay, still under support, still getting patched, etc. So the level of risk, if I don't do it, is very low. But if I'm running a version of Windows that is you know, superseded, you know, it's five years old, there's no longer support available, it's full of vulnerabilities, it's gonna be high because now that becomes a security risk. So you really wanna give each one of these categories a risk rating. Now, the goal of, of uh, really the roadmap is really just to present the business, present senior management, perhaps the, the people who are signing the checks for the money, 
um, an overview of what you want to achieve in technology over a certain amount of period, right? A certain amount of time. If they decide that they want to implement some or all of the items on that list, the next step is, well, how do I group each of these items, right? Do I need to implement now? Now that I've gotten the sign off to get a brand new SAN, do I now need to create a project? Do I need to now design a project team and have a project plan and implement it as a project? And this is gonna be separate from your business as usual because generally the items that are gonna be outlined in your roadmap are outside of business as usual. They are separate things, things that you wanna look at implementing that are outside of your standard BAU tasks. So a lot of the time they may require a project budget assigned to it and uh, set within a project guideline. So you may wanna have project resources, internal, external, a project manager, and then the development of a detailed project proposal or project plan, really going in depth as to what it includes. So we discussed before, before it's gonna have your um, a brief description of what your particular task is, but now in the project plan, we wanna go into detail what is required and how I'm gonna do it. So this could be a range of different things, such as hardware implementations, hardware upgrades, hardware delivery, uh, things such as server upgrades. I wanna look at increasing my server fleet. Uh, I could have servers that are you know, out of warranty or coming up to end of warranty, end of life. So you may wanna include a server section. Other areas could include your storage. So things like your SAN and your NAS um, storage architecture. Uh, again, similar to the servers, it could be just a requirement to increase the capacity. You know, you're running out of capacity. You need to improve your capacity by adding X amount of new disks or new, some new trays, or, or perhaps even replacing the existing SAN or NAS with a brand new SAN or NAS. Um, a lot of companies may have smaller, um, you know, smaller NAS devices, and they, you know, could include an area in there to look at migrating from this smaller type of small business, medium business, uh, SAN or NAS into a more enterprise grade that is rackable and stackable and can expand into, you know, into the pet petabytes or zettabytes worth of data. Apart from your server and your storage, you then got the whole uh, networking side of things. So, uh, if you want to look at uh, including in here mass product uh, deployments, say around the routers around your switches that you deploy. Uh, if you want to implement perhaps Wi-Fi in your, in your office, in your building, uh, you wanna you know, put that in the robot because it is a pretty big ticket item. Uh, other things such as improving your firewalls, perhaps looking at setting up redundancy on your firewalls, having two of them, uh, and really upgrading that security fleet uh, of uh, hardware in your business. Things that can be included in this hardware category would be things such as um, implementations of uh, data center technologies. So you could have on-prem, you could have all of your hardware located in your office on-prem, but you may wanna to move to a data center uh, location, which is still considered on-prem, but it's outside of your physical location so that it is completely isolated and uh, you know, you've got all, all the power, the redundancy, all that, all that sort of stuff is all dealt with in a separate, separate location. So that is a fairly big ticket item that would involve a lot of planning, a lot of structure, a lot of equipment, a lot of cost perhaps. Uh, if you're migrating data centers, um, you wanna put that into your roadmap to really give visibility to those people that need to know about this. If you're in a, an environment, for example, that has a really, really messy um, data uh, hall or a you know cabinets or your racks are very messy. They have been cabled incorrectly. There's no labeling. Uh, there's no cable management. Everything's just poorly, poorly set up. Uh, an item that you could put in your technology roadmap is around you know looking at the hardware perspective, uh, redesigning your um, your room, right? Redesigning your comms room, your server room. Other things you may want to include are very generic things such as printer upgrades. So if you're if you're wanting to include um, you know, items around your office floor from an IT perspective, things such as mass printer upgrades, if you wanna move from smaller printers to larger printers, or you want to just redesign how, how your printers are configured and just you wanna you know, do a full overhaul of your printer um, uh, installations. Uh, things such as your desktop and your laptop fleet, uh, if you don't have, say, a specific vendor that you go for your hardware for, you know, you don't, you don't do, say, just Dell or just Lenovo or something, you may want to consider 
saying, look, we want to partner with a particular company and just purchase their products because from a day-to-day -day management, it may be easier for the IT team to manage a single uh, vendor type of product from a driver's perspective, etc. So you may want to look at full overhauls of your, of your hardware, throw, it, throw that into your uh, roadmap and you're really looking at that hardware over a you know, three year period, you want to set in stone from end of this year, we want to get all of that hardware refreshed and then make sure that it's all the same, all standardized across our, our entire environment and our, our entire fleet of staff. From hardware, we're moving into software. So we're looking at software migrations and upgrades. If you're running legacy software, say older versions of Windows, older SQL, uh, older, more enterprise grade applications, you know, desktop apps or even server apps, you may want to include that as a big package to review all of your licensing, review, review all of your uh, version controls, and perhaps do some mass upgrades of your software. Look at monitoring. If you've got monitoring across your uh, environment already, fantastic. So this is server monitoring, network monitoring, making sure that the health of your environment is correct, is, is going well. Uh, if you don't, you may want to include that to deploy a you know enterprise grade monitoring sort of solution that can monitor all of your fleet correctly. Another thing I like to add in the software category is around looking at physical to virtual um, migrations. So you've probably got a number of servers in your fleet. Uh, a lot of them, uh, in a lot of companies, I've seen that they're still using a lot of physical servers. So a majority of businesses now are virtual, uh, virtual server based. So they've got physical servers, but they're running multiple virtual servers. You know, even other businesses have got virtual servers sitting up on the cloud, for example. So a component of this would be looking at moving from physical to a virtual sort of setup. This could be migrating physical servers to virtual, decommissioning old physical servers, migrating physical up to the cloud. But really I put that into the software category because we are dealing with software and converting physical into a software based virtual machine. Depending on the size of your business, you may have a, you know, thousands of staff, hundreds if not thousands of staff that uh, your IT help desk, IT support guys may have to manage from a day-to-day -day perspective. So having a tool such as SCCM or a, a, uh, you know, a tool that can do remote management of staff, you could have staff in multiple offices in other states, in other parts of the world, and you need to remotely manage them. A lot of businesses will invest time to develop or, or, you know, or have a product that they can uh, remotely manage everything. They can remote into a computer, they can push out software, they can make sure that the patching and the updates of all of their fleet are correct and up to date. Um, so using certain tools, may benefit you. So include that because it is a very high cost item sometimes to roll out, you may wanna put that into that roadmap. Other things around the software space would be around databases. If you do have a number of databases in your fleet, you may wanna look at things such as improving your database uh, presence, improving your database consolidation uh, in your business. You may have a lot of databases, you wanna bring that database control level down. You may wanna review things like, such as your database licensing, your versions, if you need to upgrade your database versions. If you want to you know, perhaps change vendors from databases, move from SQL to Oracle, or introduce Oracle if there's a requirement, uh, if you want to look more towards you know, lowering your costs and perhaps moving into a cheaper MySQL uh, solution, a big database component in there would benefit. The next big category that I focus on would be around high availability, redundancy, disaster recovery, all those sort of things. This is making sure that all of my hardware and software is all set up for redundancy. So a big ticket item is making sure that my hardware from a server, storage, network, router, switch, firewall perspective is all redundant. Uh, this is generally gonna be a very, very big ticket item uh, and a lot of businesses will take this seriously because they don't wanna, they can't afford any outages, any downtime whatsoever. Um, additionally to that, you may wanna look at software that you're using, make sure that the software itself is redundant and highly available. Uh, we don't wanna have any outages where possible. So there is gonna be a cost because in a lot of places, if you wanna have full redundancy, rather than me going out and purchasing one network switch, I would purchase two network switches. I'd set up one here, the other one here, and then set up my connections to go to both so that if one fails, the other one can kick up and do what it needs to do. So really redundancy would be a very, very important uh, factor, uh, but 
be in mind that this will require some explaining and some um, you know proving why this is a better method to go down and showing that you don't have any well you can reduce mitigate really the risk of any outages if you do focus on this redundancy and high availability as part of this you're looking at your backups maybe re overhaul of your entire backup architecture making sure that your backups are done correctly making sure that they're going off site whether they're going to tape to disk whether they're going off to the cloud making sure that your backups are regularly tested. A lot of places will do their backups, but they'll never test them to make sure that the backups can actually be restored. Uh, so doing those sort of things, uh, perhaps introducing monthly backup checks, backup checks and restore checks for different applications, different systems every single month. So really a huge overhaul of your backup. Reviewing your retention policies. How long do you need to keep data for? What sort of data do you need to be copying and backing up? Do you need to back up just production or do you need to also back up your staging and test environments also? And just really determining where this data, where these backups are going to live and for how long. Part of your redundancy and your high availability may actually even encompass a secondary site. So there may be, you know, you've got your head office with a data center room in there with a server room. Um, but in the case where you've got a huge disaster and everything there goes down, you may want to have a secondary site where everything can fail over, right? So you can have active, active setup. So you have two data centers that are active, active, or you can have one is active, one is cold, one is essentially just a DR site. So that in the, in the case of a disaster, everything fails over. This generally is gonna involve a lot more costing uh, and a lot more justification for this. Um, it's gonna require another data center or another alternate location. It may require the software and the storage, the SAN, for example, that can do replication of storage, uh, a tool such as VMware SRM that can do the server migrations and keep them up to date and keep them relevant as well between the two sites. We wanna maybe review our backup um, uh, power architecture. Do our UPS systems, um, do what they need to do, making sure that all of your systems can be uh, powered via some form of backup generator, backup UPS. In the case where you've got power outages, that your UPSs are sufficiently set up and configured correctly to make sure that everything is running for a certain amount of time. Uh, this could include introducing regular testing of your UPS uh, or your backup power systems. The other category is around security compliance making sure that we wanna introduce better security practices and measures into our business. So over a 12 month period, we, want, we are here right now, there's all these potential security flaws, so you may need to expose a lot of security concerns and flaws that you may have in your systems. But in 12 months time, in 24 months time, this is where we want to be. And to introduce all of these things would put us in a much better position from a cybersecurity security perspective. This may require reviewing your entire architecture setup in your company, reviewing how your servers, your storage, your network is configured. Is it configured from with a security conscious mind? Are our systems secure? Are they patched regularly? Are they kept up to date? Um, are, they, are they hacker proof, if we call it? Something like your Active Directory, making sure that your Active Directory is set up correctly and is working how it should be from a security mindset. So making sure that all the users have only rights to certain areas. So Active Directory is talking to your servers or to other computers, making sure that only the right people have got access to certain things, such as your file servers, if you've got storage such as your NAS, making sure that the storage is secure enough that only the right people have got access to it. Looking at things like security groups, making sure that your AD itself is secure so that nobody can just grant themselves elevated privileges. Part of your AD is reviewing things like your domain controllers, your schema admins, uh, excuse me, your domain controllers, yes, but your domain admins, your schema admins, your enterprise admins, making sure that only the people that need these sort of rights have it. I've seen too many organizations where almost everybody in the IT department is a domain admin or an enterprise admin. Defeats the point, defeats the point of, of security. You wanna have a niche group, a group of trusted people that can really control the overall security from an active directory domain controller perspective. Perhaps looking at segmenting your network. You wanna maybe create le uh, segmentation be you know, within the office, you know, group it up into different VLANs, into different subnets so that not all your servers and your printers and your desktops and your laptops are all on the same network for everything to access. You may wanna put um, different subnets in there, right? Talking to different routers, routing traffic between the subnets, going by the firewall, making sure the firewall is configured correctly to only allow certain systems to access only certain systems. 
Uh, if we're talking about firewalls, you wanna look at your firewall profile, making sure that that is set up per correctly so that outside the world coming in only has the, 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 the relevant setup that it needs. Uh, making sure that only the appropriate ports are open from an outside in and even from an inside out. Uh, setting up something like a DMZ or a DMZ zone where only the servers that are in there are internet exposed only on the ports that needs to be internet exposed, but everything else internal is blocked and is not accessible um, from the outside world. It has to go essentially via a firewall. So really reviewing that. Firewalls too often, there are so many um, any, any rules, right? This essentially means anything goes, anything can come in, anything can go out across every single port, every single subnet, every IP. Bad practice for security. So a big item in your technology roadmap is really exposing that if you do have those flaws, working with your security guys, working with your network guys, and fixing up those holes, making sure that your network is secure. Your email security, your email filtering, whether you've got on-prem email, something like Exchange, or whether you're using Office 365, making sure that your emails are secure, making sure you're using a, a email filtering system to control what is coming in and out from an email perspective. Could also include in your roadmap something such as introduction of a proxy. This could work side by side with your firewall, but controlling the access to certain systems uh, by proxies, internal reverse proxies, uh, proxies for your systems, proxies for your users to control what sort of level of access they've got, where the traffic flows, what they can and can't do. But we touched on earlier around the patching, making sure your systems are up to date. This is very, very important. The reason that vendors release patches is not because they just wanna give you a complete headache to manage it and make sure that all your guys are doing their work, working weekends, working overnight to patch your systems. A lot of the time, these are pretty important security vulnerable patching uh, fixes, right? So vendors such as Microsoft or Cisco have identified we've got a big hole in this area or perhaps a system has been, you know, has become vulnerable because of a, an external attack and as a result of that, they then, they then released a patch to fix that vulnerability. So keeping your systems up to date is very, very important and very, very serious, right? A lot of places do not take this seriously enough, but it is exceptionally important. Part of that is looking at the versions of the software that you're running. A lot of cases, if you're running software across any of your fleet that has since uh, become end of life, chances are that that software can no longer be patched because there's no patches being released. So keeping your software up to date so that there are patches still available to be able to patch this software and increase your security presence in your business. When you're networking, we talked about it a little bit, but reviewing your, your, um, your, your routers and your switches, but making sure you're not using things such as um, uh, dumb switches. So switches that are unmanaged, that have got no smarts really behind it. So I would definitely recommend investing in managed switches. So these are switches that you can go in and you can control the switches themselves. You can set up rules on the switches, you can set up rules on the ports, can control the speed of the ports, control, set up VLAN subnets on those switches. You've got more control, you can control things um, in terms of blocking what comes in, what comes out. You can segregate your network much easier if you've got managed switches throughout your sphere. So if you do have a lot of unmanaged switches, this could be a pretty expensive item if you do want to look at replacing everything from unmanaged to managed switches, but it's very, very important. My last item is all really around the, practica the practicality, the process, the procedure. Um, this could involve things such as reviewing your entire IT team, right? So if you are responsible for writing this roadmap and you have a number of IT professionals working for you or you have to review what your IT presence looks like, you may wanna have part of your item there is to review my skills across my entire team. Uh, who's good at what? What skills are lacking? Do I need to send people off on training? Do I need to hire more people? Do I have too many people? I may need to look at restructuring. So this is gonna be a big ticket item. Uh, you may need to sit with certain people in your business to really review what the requirements are to be able to you know, do the job um, in your business. The process is around having a proper inventory or a proper asset register um, uh, in progress, right? A lot of places may not have this, but knowing what you are managing is imperatively important. So keeping a register, whether it's an online presence or even a simple spreadsheet of all of your assets, what I do have, what it does, what the specs are, what it's talking to, what its function is, everything like that. So encompass, uh, really encompass a, a mentality that you need to know what you're managing 
to be able to actually manage it. If you don't know what you're managing, you're in big trouble. So having a good asset register, asset inventory in your system would be imperative. So if you don't have it, throw that in. A good item that you can include here is around reviewing your relationships with partners, with vendors, with customers. Uh, if you deal a lot with third-party vendors, such as your big providers, um, managed services providers even, consulting firms for project managers, those sort of things. It's a good item there to include to review your entire presence around that. A lot of places will go and stick with a particular vendor and that's it. So looking at reviewing who you do who you do partner and business with may improve that presence in your business. The other big item is you may wanna review what your actual IT process is. Uh, are you following ITIL? Like, do you have a specific ticketing system in place that follows a particular path or particular process for doing your IT processes? You may want to look at introducing some sort of a change management process, uh, tracking risk management, uh, tracking any of these sort of items that are um, going to improve the process of your IT operations. How you address risk, how you address change. Do you have change committees? Do you have a change board, you know, a change approval board? Um, perhaps you may just, you know, just go out and just implement changes or upgrade systems without really any thought behind it. So you may want to design this properly so that you have a actual board in place that approves these changes before they actually take place. Anything around uh, office shuffles. If you're if you're getting a brand new office, implementation implementation of a brand new office, you're moving, you're relocating locations, um, you've just, you know, purchased a new business and you need to implement them into your infrastructure. So these are really big important items that will take a long time to plan. Perhaps you want to look at re, um, redesigning your, your office that will impact your IT systems. So you may need to relocate your equipment. Uh, we talked about before about relocating data centers or implementing a data center. But what if you're implementing it into a different area of the building? The introduction of a four tier uh, deployment model I think is very, very important and not enough places do it. This is looking at setting up a development, a test, a staging and a production environment for every single core business system. So if I'm gonna release a particular system, uh, let's say I'm in charge of you know, deploying some software that perhaps is customer facing or even internal uh, within my business, I'm developing apps for my internal staff. Uh, if I've got a website, those sort of things that I'm exposing out to the internet, you wanna go through the proper process. You know, you wanna have a team of perhaps development sorts of people and have systems that are just for development, people that can go in and do a whole bunch of stuff and develop the apps. Then from there, it moves into a testing phase where you may have the same people, developers, or even other people involved to test that product. It then moves into a staging environment where it's essentially tested as if it's production. It's in preparation for the next step, which is production. So staging it, making sure that it does what it needs to do, and then into a production environment. A lot of places, too many times, will go straight into production. We just deploy straight into production without performing this 4T process. So this is a really good process thing to have, is int introducing a proper measure for you can test your applications, test your hardware, test your software before it does move into production. So that is my general overview of what the technology map could include. Uh, look, this is dependent on the business. These are just examples of big items that I have generally used in the past. Uh, you may have other items that you want to include. There could be items that are discussed that may not even be relevant to you. So you really want to customize this to your organizational needs, but really it's good to sort of assess what your IT presence looks like and then build your roadmap around that. How you structure it is completely up to you as well. You could just have a simple uh, you know, document that you just create and you just outline it with different uh, years and your different quarters, for example, and the months that you want to achieve certain things. Something like a Gantt chart would also be beneficial to really show you how where it starts, where it ends, if there's overlap, um, and really that's really where you take it from there. So it's really customizable to you, but it's very, very important to have something like this so that you can show the people uh, in those positions of um, you know, authority to make decisions around you know, what, what sort of funds they can provide to, to the IT department, around what systems you do uh, and can uh, introduce over the next 12 to 24 months. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would love it if you give me a thumbs up, comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts about this and we will talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.